You'll hear people talk a lot in the business world about the balance sheet, a.k.a. the statement of financial position, and you'll hear them talk a lot about the income statement with the earnings figure that publicly traded companies need to disclose to investors every quarter. But you won't hear as much about the statement of cash flows. And that is a shame because the statement of cash flows is one of the most important financial statements when it comes to analyzing a company's performance. So what does the statement of cash flows tell us? It tells us why a company's cash balance increased or decreased during a period. This is important because cash management is absolutely critical. It is the most important thing to the survival of a company. A company cannot survive without cash. If a company runs out of cash, they won't be able to pay their employees. They won't be able to pay their utility bill. They won't be able to pay for inventory if they're a retailer. So they need cash to survive. If they ever run out of cash, that is the end of operations for that company. So it's absolutely critical to understand what is going on with the company's cash. Why did it go up? Why did it go down? We can always tell what the cash balance is by just looking at the balance sheet, right? Because cash and cash equivalents, that's going to be a line item on the balance sheet. That'll tell you how much cash the company has at any given point in time. But we want to see from one period to the next, why did cash go up or why did it go down? Let's say the cash went up for a company by $80 million. And you say, oh, great. You just said that cash is critical and cash went up by $80 million over the past year. So this company must be doing great. Well, what if I told you that from that company's main business operations, they lost hundreds of millions of dollars in cash and that the only way that the cash balance ended up going up by $80 million is because the company borrowed a ton of money. Would you be as excited about the company's business operations? So we want to understand where is the cash coming from? It went up by $80 million. But why? Did they generate a ton of cash from selling inventory or providing services? Is that why cash went up by $80 million? Or is it that they borrowed money? Did they issue stock to investors and that's how they got the cash? Maybe they sold off the fixed assets or, or, or some investments. So we want to understand the sources uh, of the cash flow. And then we want to think about at a deeper level, are those sources of cash flow, are they sustainable? Is that something we're going to be able to rely on? If the company's getting all its cash from borrowing money, is it going to be able to do that forever? If they're consistently just losing a ton of cash for the main business operations. Are people going to just lend this company money forever as it burns through cash? Probably not. So we've got three sections of our statement of cash flow. So we've got the operating section. Okay, we've got the investing section. We've got financing. So all the cash flows are going to be grouped uh, either as operating cash flow, investing cash flow, or financing cash flow. I like to think about operating cash flow as basically the company's cash basis, net income. And when you use the indirect method, which is what most companies use to prepare the statement of cash flows, you actually start with the company's net income from its income statement, and then you make some adjustments to it to get to basically cash basis income. For example, you would take out credit sales. Because credit sales increase net income because of accrual accounting, right? We recognize a sale even though we don't have the cash yet. But... Just, we don't have the cash yet. So we want cash basis net income. We would deduct from regular net income. We, we would subtract uh, any uh, increase uh, in net income due to credit sales. So we basically back out the credit sales. So you're getting cash basis net income. Okay. Now, investing cash flows in the investing section that's the company uh you know they so if you hear about capital expenditures for example okay capex capital expenditures are a cash outflow in the investing section that's where you'd see capex like let's say it was walmart and they were investing money to build new stores new retail stores so that would be a cash outflow of purchase of property plant equipment uh in the investing section uh if they sell off or for purchase any investments uh, if they dispose of fixed assets, all that's going to be in the investing section. Financing is, the, so transactions with owners and creditors, what I mean by that is, uh, so with an owner, it'd be like if they're paying dividends to shareholders, uh, if they're getting st they're issuing stock and the shareholders are getting stock and then they're giving cash to the company. So the cash, the company would have a positive cash flow from financing uh, due, due to, you know, issuing stock, whether in an IPO, a seasoned offering, whatever. Creditors, so if the company borrowed money, that's going to be a cash inflow in financing. If they're repaying debt, that's going to be a cash outflow in financing. And so here, here's some more uh, examples. Some of them I already mentioned, but just to give you an idea of the type of cash flows, again, think of operations, cash flow from operating activities, also known as operating cash flow. Okay, that is one of the single most important 
uh, predictors of a company's financial health is thinking about operating cash flow. Is that company able to generate on a net basis more cash than they spent in whatever their main business operation is? So for Walmart, that would be acquiring inventory and, and selling it in their stores. Okay, so when they buying and selling inventory, is Walmart able to generate positive operating cash flow? Okay, if it's not, then we've got a problem. We've got a problem. Okay, so as I mentioned, there's two different ways to present this statement of cash flows. And the nice thing is that the investing section and financing section are identical, whether you do it either way. Okay, the only thing that matters is the way that the operating section is presented. Okay, so the indirect method, this is the one that I'm going to focus most of my time on. I really suggest that you learn. Uh, you, again, you start in the operating section with net income from the income statement, and then you make some adjustments, like you add back, like for example, depreciation. Why? Depreciation is an expense, it reduced net income, but has no effect on cash, right? It's a non-cash expense. Okay, and then you add back, you make other adjustments, uh, like working capital accounts, like I said, if there was an increase uh, in receivables due to credit sales, you're gonna back that out and so forth, okay? So you get to the operating cash flow, okay? Which I like to think of as cash basis net income. So that's, I think it's more intuitive with the indirect method, you're converting accrual basis net income to cash basis uh, profit or loss. Now, the direct method, some people prefer a very small number of firms actually use uh, the direct method, but you get to the same place. What I want to emphasize is operating cash flow, either way, the number will be the same. Okay, it's just the way it's presented. So you do it this way or you do it this way. Either way, you're going to have an identical operating cash flow. It's just the way the operating section is presented. So again, I'm going to focus on the indirect method because that's what uh, the overwhelming majority of companies use. Now, again, what are we doing with the statement of cash flow here? Well, we're trying to predict future cash flows for the company. Why would we care about future cash flows? Well, one way to value a company is using a discounted cash flow. Right, so we can do DCF analysis. We'll calculate something called free cash flow for the company, which I'll make other videos on. But we can calculate free cash flow and think of the company as a stream of cash flows into the future and discount those cash flows back to present value, uh, add them all up, and you basically have an estimated value of the firm. You can also think about the company's ability to pay dividends. And the, the, if you're thinking, well, what if they were to borrow more money? Would they be able to pay? So, you know, are they going to be able to have enough cash to update their stores and keep their stores nice and clean? If we're talking about a retailer, so thinking about what the cash flows are going to be in the future. Again, if we've got positive operating cash flow, that's a great thing. If we have negative operating cash flow, then it's like, ah, uh, we're not able to stand on our own two feet, generate enough cash from our business operations. We're either going to have to borrow it. We're going to have to issue stock, or we're going to have to start selling off some investments or fixed assets. Now, when we look at a statement of cash flow, you can see exactly where a company is at in its life cycle. Okay, and I've got some examples of that just to give you a general rule of thumb. And I'm just going to walk through it quickly. We'll get into this more with specific companies. But let's say you have a startup. Generally speaking, if you have a startup company, you would expect the operating cash flow would, in the initial stages, be negative because the company's just getting going, right? You don't expect them to necessarily have positive cash flow from their business operations yet. So they have negative cash flow from operating, negative cash flow from investing. That's not a bad thing, by the way. Negative cash flow from investing for a startup or a mature firm, negative cash flow from investing is fine. You, you want the company either trying to expand or, like I said, if we're talking about Walmart, if they're not necessarily building new stores, but maybe keeping their stores, existing stores clean. So it's fine to have negative cash flow from investing. It's, a, it's actually a good thing. The company's investing in the business. Um, now, a startup, getting back, so they have negative operating cash flow, negative uh, investing cash flow as they're building out the company, and then positive cash flow from financing. Because they're in the early stages of startup, you see they're getting money from either borrowing it or getting it from investors. Now, a mature company, okay, a mature company, you expect them to have positive operating cash flow. If they don't have positive operating cash flow and the company's been around a while, then you say, okay, they're more likely to be in distress. Okay, a company with negative operating cash flow has been in business 30 years, and if they have positive cash flow from investing and negative cash flow from operating, that's really a company in distress because they're not able to generate cash from their main business operations, so they're having to sell off fixed assets and stuff. That'd be like a company like JCPenney or something having to sell off stores, sell off fixtures. It's like, hey, don't you need that stuff to make money? And they're like, well, we're not making money from our main business. So we have to generate cash by selling off some of our stuff. Okay. So that's just an overview of how we can think about the life cycle. Now let's dig into an actual statement of cash flow here. So we've got Walmart. 
and we actually have three uh we have three statement of cash rules here so we got for 2021 uh 2020 and 2019 each uh, for the fiscal year ended january 31 now as i said most companies use indirect method walmart is no different so they start with net income okay this is the operating section here okay you got operating section investing section down here and then financing so the operating section start with accrual basis net income from the income statement they had 13.7 billion dollars of profit uh, for the fiscal year ended uh, January 31st, uh, 2021. And then you make adjustments. You add back depreciation and so forth. Okay, They get to $36 billion of operating cash flow. Okay, That's a lot of operating cash flow. Okay, Now, we look at the investing. Cash flow from investing is negative, negative $10 billion. That's fine, though. That's fine. That's not a problem. Payments for property, plant, and equipment. Maybe they're building more stores. Maybe they're updating existing stores. Uh, you know, maybe they had a fleet of trucks and they had to replace some of their trucks, whatever. That's fine. This is not a problem that they have negative cash flow from investing. Now, cash flow from financing could go either way for a, 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 a large uh, company like Walmart that's successful. Uh, now we see in this case it's negative, but that's not a bad thing. Why is it negative? Well, repayments of long-term debt. So they're paying back some of the debt that they borrowed. Uh, dividends paid to shareholders. So they paid out $6 billion of dividends. And then they repurchased some of their stock, $2.6 billion. So that's fine. That's good. If you're an investor, hey, they're paying their debt. They're issuing dividends. They're uh, repurchasing shares. So just because you see a negative number for uh, cash from financing or cash from investing, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. This company has positive operating cash flow. And this is what, so you see now what is happening with the company's cash during the period. They're generating plenty of cash from their operations to stay in business. They're not having to borrow tons of money or whatever. They're not existing because people are lending them money. They generate, they can stand on their own two feet with the cash flow they're generating. They're updating their stores. They're making investments. They're paying dividends and so forth. So this is what is happening with the cash from Walmart. Now, companies, companies will sometimes do, play games with the statement of cash flow and we will talk about manipulation and things like that and, and sometimes it's not even just manipulation but just thinking about the different numbers that we have here so for example i haven't looked at walmart's uh statement of cash flow a lot i just pulled it right before this video so i don't want to give an in-depth analysis here but just the first thing that jumps out of me is a company's accounts payable went up by almost seven billion dollars during the period and you see that that is added as a working capital adjust, adjustment. And I've got other videos. If you're wondering, like, how does he actually make a statement of cash flow? How does all the, I've got other videos on that if you want to check it out. But long story short, when there's an increase in a, a current liability, uh, like accounts payable, that's going to be added back as an adjustment to net income in the operating section. So you see that that basically increased the operating cash flow almost $7 billion there, right? And then the question is, well, is that sustainable? Why, why would it happen that account payable go up by $7 billion? It wasn't like that last period or the period before. That's a big jump, right? So last period, it was almost flat and then went up almost $7 billion. What is that? Well, delaying payment of vendors, right? That's one way that account payable would go up is you're just delaying payment of vendors. Now, you're waiting longer to, to pay your suppliers. Not necessarily a bad thing. And you might even say that's a great idea from, hey, if they'll, they'll wait longer to take the money uh, and we don't have to pay any kind of penalty for that. Hey, that's great. But you got to think about it like this. Is that a sustainable source of cash flow? Are they, we're going to, so let's say, I'm just going to make up a number off the top of my head. Let's say that they were willing to wait 40 days to get paid uh, this period. Can we go to 50 days? Can we go to 60? Maybe. What about 120? Now, okay, come on. Let's not get ridiculous here. So we want to think about how the sources of cash flow, sustainable or not sustainable. We're going to dig into this and a lot more when we get a higher level with manipulating the statement of cash flow and thinking about the line items therein.